What's up YouTube, it's Todd Horst here with Tasty Tracker, and I have another small account challenge update. Currently the net, net liquidity is sitting at 1076, so we're up $76 so far um, since we started on 11.1. So in 10 days, $76. Uh, obviously I, I wouldn't expect that pace to necessarily continue, but um, so far uh, things are going well. We closed out our second trade today, which I'll go over, uh, opened up our uh, fourth trade in Kohl's, uh, which is not a typical ticker you would be trading a lot, but uh, we'll get into that. And then uh, here we have buying power at uh, 574. So, um, you know, we're keeping it about half, uh, somewhere close to half buying power. So, um, you know, once I get up to around the uh, $1,500 range, we'll be looking to run three positions at a time. And of course, I might uh, jump the gun a little bit on that um, just to speed things up. But but again, uh, typically trying to stick to half. Okay, just uh, generally speaking, going over um, SPY, we have a huge jump up on the day on good CPI. Um, so I could definitely see this coming the whole way up here to this uh, resistance around 408. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, so we could definitely, uh, you know, roll over here. Uh, it would make sense to chop around, maybe confirm the 100-day SMA here before heading up to the 200. Uh, but I do think there's probably a lot of people covering shorts, or it's possible that they took all of their short positions off here. Um, these days, I don't know. Uh, I, I would assume there'd still be enough out there to get a little bit of a uh, covering run here. Um, but I, I don't expect this trend line to be broken um, around 4.10. Uh, that's just my pessimism for the current time frame. Okay, so let's go back over to these positions. Uh, looking at shop, that's been on for quite some time here. Okay, you can see we've had that open for nine days. Um, and it was only 62. I think that was the first position we put on. Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely getting about time. I would uh, typically these positions last about um, one to three or four days. Um, and then if they go past that, then they tend to last 12 to 15 days. So we're definitely getting close to the 12 or 15 days. And that sort of aligns with where we're at right now. We're at 31% of potential profit here gained. Yes, that only amounts to $19, but at this point with such a small account, um, you know, we're f focusing on percentage increases, not necessarily on the dollar amount. And that's honestly true of any account size. It's more important to be worried about your percentages than the actual dollar amount. Um, obviously, a lot of that it came from today uh, being up $68. So let's go ahead and go ahead and look at the shop chart. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're down here with the 26. Uh, puts us down here, uh, yes, I have the green line here, um, which is very close to the bottoms, uh, the the low in for the last, well, you know, um, almost the entire year uh, for the last six months, uh, we've been in this area chopping. So um, definitely possible to come up to here around 43, and then right there's, it'll be uh, the 200 ASMA will come to meet it there. So. Anywhere between 40 and 43, I think, is a good target for this. By then, we'll be out of that position. Um, so you can see I already have a working order for 35, and that comes back over to this closing uh, where, uh, how I went over this before, we're looking for the return multiple. That's how quickly we are reaching our expected rate of return. And then the percentage in increase, we'd like that to be over 20% and over a 2x return multiple. We don't always get that, obviously. So then uh, once we hit a certain point in time, it will only be possible to get a return multiple over one, and then we'll look for the percentage increase to be around 50. Um, but we can see right here, if we can close for 35, that'll be almost a 50% win at a 2x multiple. So that will definitely be um, our target for now, for the next couple of days. Uh, and, and this is based on the expected daily return, which is based on today's date and how many days to expiration. So this number will change every day as to 
That's what we want to get. Obviously, uh, like I said, I will uh, at some point share this spreadsheet, but more importantly, I'm building all of the lessons learned for from 2018 into the tracking website, Tasty Tracker, into the new, new portfolio screen. So I have a whole lot more statistics and tools in there to help out to help you make these decisions. So, uh, so I went over shop and I went over run last time. So let's go over KSS. Sorry about the dogs barking and the kids. So Kohl's is not one that I'm necessarily interested in. Um, they're kind of a, a dying business and I'm pretty sure they were looking for a buyer. Uh, but that said, we've been trading in this range since July, um, early July. And uh, so we're coming up here on the, uh, what's that, 50? No, 100 day resistance. So we're above the 20, coming up to the 100, and we were previously up there. So this would definitely be my target, sort of $30, uh, $31, $30, $31. Somewhere in that range would be good. Um, it's possible that we come up here and try to fill this gap, which we did before, um, but then we quickly popped back down once it encountered the uh, 50 days. So anyway, that would put us up here at $35. Um, that's definitely possible. One thing that was attractive was we were after earnings. I, again, I don't necessarily care what earnings are. I care what the reaction to earnings is. Um, we're trying to fight to get higher RSI, come up here on the MACD, so those all look fine. But yes, this just basing here for uh, many months gives me confidence to sell something on the lower end of this range um, with the expectation that if we get down there, it could dip, but then pop back up. Um, because this is a defined range. Okay, so we got into the 24 position here. That's the whole way down here. That would actually be fresh lows, um, which you know we haven't hit all year, so it's even below this base. So if you really wanted to push it, you could definitely come up here, sell the 25, 26, um, but then of course you're increasing our deltas, which right now this is sitting at a 17 delta. I think initially I sold it, it was 19, and then it did pop up to 20 for a bit. But now we're back below 20 delta, which is definitely my pre preference for this account, trying to be as safe as I can. Um, you know, if you've uh, subscribed to my alerts or follow me for some, some time, uh, definitely when I can get bullish, I will sell even uh, in the money or decently far in the money um, uh, puts if I'm expecting a big move. But this is no environment uh, to be uh, putting on that bullish of a position. And this account is too small that I can't sell calls to do strangles or anything like that. So um, yeah, so I'm just trying to be as conservative as I can. This one's already down to eight. Again, just um, signifying that it, it'll be, be, be pulling off here pretty quickly. Okay, so yeah, so that's it. So to trade uh, KSS, let's, let's click on, there we go. Okay, then we came out came closest to 45 days, which just so happened to be 43 days. Then I uh, scroll down here to try to get these to show. Another trick, if like these, I can't scroll down any further than that to get them to show. Another trick is to just go to any other ticker um, and then come back. Oh, I missed a step. Uh, a lot of times you should click on this to select it so that it pops you right back here to screen. But anyway, it worked. So um, closest now, one is at 22 delta. So I, I'd still prefer with the um, 24 getting the 17 delta. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, we can see for this trade, it's uh, occupying about uh, 251. And you can get a better number by coming over here, clicking this and clicking close. Um, and we can see what it will free up. So it's taking up 239 uh, buying power at the moment. So well within our limits currently. Okay, so that covered the entry of the position, the chart, and now I wanted to go over this opening section up here. So uh, we can, if we look at the original shop trade up here, uh, starting off with my net liquidity as a thousand, the fill price was 62. Is that what I actually got? Yep, 62. And then um, the days to expiration at entry. So it was at 45 days when I put that trade on initially. That means the dollars per day would be about uh, $1.38. 
if I multiply that out, this would include weekends and everything, right? So if I multiply that by 365, that would give us to $502 based on the account balance of a thousand. Uh, having an income of $500 would be a 50% ROI, a 50% increase. Um, so at the end of the year, we would be at you know $1,502.89. So that is, uh, as I said before, it's kind of self-explanatory, but um, if this were to close at 35 and we um, we're expecting to get a 50% gain without any return multiple, right? So if this expires worthless, we expect that this would generate an annual return of 50% based on our net liquidity at the time. And yes, I mean, you're um, making a lot of assumptions that you could always fill one for 62 and it would always win and, and da, 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 da. But um, we're taking this one position at a time. This is 50%. And if I can um, close this early at uh, 35 cents with a return multiple of two, then that's further increasing the ROI. So I, I did go over this a bit before, and um, but it's just another way to accelerate our return. So that's why you know you come over here and you say, well, why would you close run when it only went from 88 to 65? Um, definitely uh, could hold that longer, but each day you hold it. Uh, actually the return multiple will go down and down and down until it hits 1x. Um, so it's count, kind of counterintuitive. Um, now I will say, had you hold, held onto this a lot longer uh, or a little bit longer, you could have gotten uh, $50. Let's see what it's trading at now, $30. So I could have, <laughs> you know, I made this trade at 9.30 this morning. If I would have held till now, I would have been able to make uh, 30 more dollars, 35 more dollars. Um, so that would have been a very, very nice win. But, uh, you know, I'll take it. Um, it's still 20 bucks added to the account. Um, and, and so I can't complain. This just goes to show that your entries and exits can be rubbish and you can still be productive and make money. Um, uh, but yeah, I hope that's what this whole challenge illustrates. So yeah, so now that explains to you the open. I went over the close. Um, and I went over this thing. So the last thing will be this page, which uh, I'm going to start coding up to actually have this be pulled in dynamically. Um, as it is, the, all these figures are static. I went through and actually, you know, uh, went through each ticker and found the around a 19 delta, put in the credit, put in the collateral, put in the share price, and then this is just a formula. But um, uh, yeah, so I'll be working on creating a page that pulls in these prices every day so that it stays up to date and is automatic and doesn't require all this work. Um, but yeah, this formula isn't anything special, but I will go over that on a different date. So I think that's all I wanted to cover. Uh, if we come over here to account history, uh, we can see that was a $23 gain. Uh, I don't think I have commissions entered in for this account yet, but um, that is probably the downside, I will say, with doing this method. Um, it's really trying to boost your returns, but it's going to also boost your uh, commissions because you're going to be trading, you know, maybe twice as much um, as you would normally. So uh, that's certainly a downside. But anyway, uh, so $23 on the run position, uh, $38 on the FCX position. Um, and that puts us up, let's see here, uh, 7.2% so far this month when compared to last month. Total income, $61. So again, I think that's pretty cool. Um, uh, and hopefully we'll keep it going. Uh, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions. Do the YouTube things, and I'll talk to you next time.